So hey guys welcome back to my channel today we are gonna see what if Harry Potter was a pirate in the world of One Piece this is a movie I hope you are going to love this. So let's begin Raina Potter sniffed as she sat in her cupboard under the stairs. She had just turned six today and instead of presents in a party, she was beaten by her uncle. It was her birthday present he had told her. Her relatives didn't love her and her parents most defiantly didn't either. When she was a year old, she and her twin brother Jason were attacked by the dark wizard Voldemort. Something happened that night, but she knew she had deflected the killing curse. However, Jason was declared the boy who lived and her parents began ignoring and hating her and her twin became a spoiled jerk. A couple months ago, they had decided to get rid of her and sent her to her aunt's house. Before she left however, she took with her a bottomless bag, a book on basic spells and another on runes. She normally spoke to the portrait of her grandmother and was fascinated by what runes could do. Of course the Dursellies never knew this and she had began trying to use her magic but it was difficult. To the Dursleys she was their slave. She cooked, cleaned, was beaten for no reason and wasn't allowed to do well in school. There the teachers were all told she was a good-for-nothing child with bad manners and they had believed them thus scorning her too. The neighbors were no different. Last week though, something had changed in the Dursleys, Dudley in particular. Something she would have never thought would have happened. Flashback why are you being nice to me? Aren't I a freak? She had whispered as the boy had snuck her some food. Dudley for his part looked sad and regretful. I'm sorry I was mean to you and called you names. The teacher at class told us about a boy that was covered in bruises and cuts and she said that it was bad for parents to hit their children and that we should help them. Please forgive me? He pleaded. End of flashback since them, he would sneak her some food when they went to the park but he couldn't look like they were friends in front of his parents. He even had the other children distracted from bullying her so she was slowly forgiving him. Raina wiped away the tears that fell from her face, it wasn't fair that people were mean to her and she was powerless to do anything about it. She didn't know why her parents hated her she was quite sure if they knew that she was the one that deflected the curse it would be Jason that would be in her position or why the world was simply against her. She was six, what had she done to it? I wish I could go somewhere else. Somewhere where I could have a family and be loved and strong to never be weak again, she thought. Suddenly, she felt light, featherweight and her surroundings were far more darker than her cupboard there weren't the crack of lights anymore. Raina panicked, wondering what was going on. Do not fret my child, you are safe. A soothing lovely voice called out to her. Raina looked around, wondering what was going on. Hello? Who's there? She asked. You may call me Mother Magic Raina. I must apologize for the horrible conditions of your life. She, because she sounded female, had said mournfully. It's not your fault ma'am. Raina said politely. No child should go through what you have, especially my champion. She said surprising the little raven-haired girl, yes child, there is a prophecy that was sent down and everyone believed it to be about your brother, but it is about you. These people however, don't deserve you, not one bit, so I will send you away. Away to a world of adventure where you will find a family, friends that will stand by you. Would you like that my child? Raina couldn't believe what she was hearing. Away from the Dursleys, from this world completely where she would find people that would love her for her and cherish her? Of course she would go. Although she was making amends with Dudley, she knew he'd be fine without her. Yes please, she squealed, as she couldn't contain her happiness. Mother Magic chuckled. All right then. I will leave you a gift my child when you wake up. Just follow the instruction, or you don't have to. It's your choice. Good luck Reyna. And with that she had blacked out. Opening her eyes, she looked around and saw that she was on a small bed, she was covered in a blanket and the room was pretty bare except the lavender paint and her bottomless back at the side. She was glad she had it with her. Besides her was a box. Remembering about her gift, she opened it. Inside was a weird looking fruit with swirls on it and a letter. If you've seen this letter, then it means you have chosen to take my offer and head to the new world. Reina, my child, this world is a world of pirates and they gain special abilities by eating a fruit similar like this one. They're called devil fruits. This in particular fruit is called the copy copy fruit. It allows you to copy the abilities of any other devil fruit user as long as you look them in the eyes. It doesn't have a very nice taste but once you eat the fruit you'll lose the ability to swim, making water deadly to you. It is your choice if you want to eat it. Take care my child and live your life happy and freely. 
Mother Magic Raina star out the letter and the, the fruit and then the letter and then the fruit again, before she began eating it. Yuck, she thought, it really tastes horrible. But she had eaten it all and quickly placed the box and letter in her bag. Just then the door opened and in it came and in came a green-haired lady and a young raven-haired boy the same age as her. Oh, you're awake. The green-haired lady smiled at her, my name is Makino and this is Luffy. He found you earlier today, are you alright? She asked. Yes, I'm fine. Thank you. Reina answered, my name is Reina. It's nice to meet you. Luffy, the raven-haired boy, had given her an intense look. I'm going to be a pirate, he said, want to join my crew? Reina gave him a curious look. A pirate? Makino sighed. Luffy had convert the young girl into joining his crew pretty quickly. But on the other hand, she was glad this young girl was his friend. Luffy needed friends. Friends that wouldn't make fun of him. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
You believe me? She asked surprised. No one can fake that kind of story and you are on the small size. Shank's fists shook. No child should ever go through that. Ever. What exactly do you do? She asked, wondering what his job was. Shanks is a pirate. The best pirate in the whole world. But I'm going to be better, Luffy declared. Reina looked at her new friend and then the grinning red-haired man and then back again. She couldn't hold it any longer. Ha 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 ha. He's not a pirate. Just look at him. She pointed at the gaping red head. Yes, he is. Luffy countered. No, he isn't. Yes, he is. No, he isn't and they would have continued arguing had a smoking man with a long hair and carrying a pistol had not interrupted them. This was Ben Beckman. Reina, what exactly do you think is a pirate? He asked, ignoring Shanks mumbled of, what's wrong with me? As he pat his self down. Pirates, are mean looking, ugly, they never shower, always have long beard, attacks anything, obsessed with power and gold, always drunk she began listing off and the bar full of pirates began roaring in laughter again. Sorry to deappoint you Reina, but not all pirates are like that except our captain likes getting drunk. Ben gave her a soft smile. I'm not always drunk, Shanks yelled, but Ben simply gave him a look that quieted him down. Whoa really? You guys are awesome then, she happily exclaimed. It must be a lot of work being the captain huh? She asked. E.H. I'm not the captain, Shanks is. Ben's sweat dropped at her shocked look. No way. You better believe it's Squirt. I'm the best captain there is. Shanks grinned making a pose, with Luffy cheering him on. Reina looked at him and then back to Ben with a pitying look. You poor thing. She patted the man's shoulder and that set the pirates off again at Shanks' depressing look. Luffy, having given up trying to cheer up the man, slid into the seat beside the raven-haired girl. Ray, since you have nowhere to go, want to stay with me? He asked. Luffy always felt lonely. None of the children liked to play with him, always calling him mean names and his grandpa was never there and when he was, he always went on and on about being a marine or training him. He was so happy when Reina agreed to join his crew and never made fun of his dream. He was also extremely angry at what her family had done to her. He made a promise to beat them up if ever saw them. I won't be intruding will I? She asked, not believing how fast things were moving about. Of course not dear. You're always welcome, Makino smiled. Thank you then. I've got to be close to my captain after all. She grinned as Luffy pulled her into a hug and laughed and then began talking about the different adventures they could go on. Makino smiled, glad that her favorite little boy and the young girl that wormed her way into her heart were getting along well. One week later Luffy no don't eat that, but she was too late. Yuck, that's disgusting. How can food taste that bad? The young boy spat, but still finished eating it. It's called a devil fruit Luffy. It gives you a power, but in exchange you're weak to seawater and can't swim anymore, she explained. What? But I love swimming, he cried and she gave him a deadpanned look. You don't even know how to swim, but if it makes you feel any better, I ate one too. My power gives me the ability to copy the powers of any fruit as long as they look me in the eye, she said and when he looked her in the eye, she felt his power being copied. So, what's my power? He asked, looking at him. I don't KN. Luffy. Did you eat the fruit that was in here? Shanks yelled, waving around the wooden box. Yeah, it was disgusting, but now Ray and I are looking for what can of power I have. He smiled happily. You idiot. Now you can't swim wait a minute. How do you know about devil fruits Ray? He turned his attention to her, and she simply shrugged. I ate one too. It's the copy copy fruit and I just copied Luffy's powers. We're trying to figure it out though. You wouldn't happen to know what it is do you? She asked, however it was Ben who answered. It's called the gum gum fruit. It turns the person's body into rubber, he said and then demonstrated by pulling Luffy's arm, which stretched. Whoa! The two six-year-olds exclaimed. Come on, let's go practice. Luffy cheered happily as he dragged her out of her seat and out the bar. They kept running, until they reached the beach, which was when Reina had heard something. Luffy, there's someone crying, she said and this time she dragged him. They were surprised when they had seen it was a sea king and Luffy was even surprised when Reina had began speaking to it. Hello little one, are you hurt? The raven-haired girl asked. I don't know where I am. I think I'm lost, 
The sea king that sounded female sniffed. It's all right, you can stay with us if you'd like. Reina petted the beautiful fish. Really, I'd love to, she exclaimed nuzzling in the human's face. Do you have a name? My name is Reina and this is my friend Luffy. I don't have a name. Can you give me one? Hmm. I'll call you Rhea. Do you like it? Yes, it's a beautiful name, Ray. You can speak to Sea Kings? Luffy cried out, stars in his eyes at the awesomeness of his first mate. Reina, for her part, was confused. Didn't you understand her? She asked and he shook his head. Oh well. I hope you don't. She'll be staying with us, and I named her Rhea, she said happily. It's nice to meet you, Rhea. He waved at the large sea king, who grinned and waved her tail. Come on, Ray, we need to get strong, Luffy said, and the rest of the day, they practiced with their gum gum powers, with Luffy declaring he was going to make it the greatest power ever. When it was nightfall, they made their way back to the bar and were greeted by the sight of a drunk Shanks telling another man to drink up. When the man spotted them, he waved them over. Luffy, Ray, this is Mahawk, a friend of mine. He came all the way here to see me. Isn't he a great friend? While Luffy nodded enthusiastically, Reina racked her brain. For some reason, she had heard that name before. Hello there, little lady. The man Mahawk gave her this creepy smile, which would have left other females swoon, and that's when it hit her. I remember you, she exclaimed, gaining the attention of many. Shanks said you were a pervert, and with that, she kicked the man right between the legs. Ouch! The pirates screamed holding their precious jewels from the small yet deadly girl. The last thing Mahawk remembered was the adorable girl who would defiantly be Looker when she grew older glaring down at his collapsed form. He would get his revenge on the red head, that was a promise. Tomorrow is finally the day we begin our adventure. Reina thought as she watched Luffy get his last minute meat dinner. The last ten years since her arrival to this world were amazing. She would forever be grateful for Mother Magic to sending her to this new world. She and Luffy had taken to practicing their rubber powers and Luffy had even gotten kidnapped by these stupid bandits. If it weren't for Rhea, she was sure both he and Shanks would have died, or at least been injured. She and Luffy had rescued a hawk that was injured and managed to patch him up as good as new. Although she didn't understand him, she had adopted him the same way as she did Rhea and called him Jet. Jet, surprising had grown big not as big as Rhea but was still large for a bird. She believed it was something to do with her magic. She used him to carry letters all the time. After that, the red haired pirates had to leave, much to their disappointment, but they promised to meet in the sea when they had their own crew. Shanks had given Luffy his straw hat, making him promise to take good care of it, and she had gotten a pistol and a holder from Ben, who she had gotten close to. After they had left, Reina had met Monkey D. Garp for the first time. He had taken on look at her when Luffy introduced her as his friend and said that she would make a wonderful marine wife. She was never more angry than she was before then and vehemently denied it. Of course he did begin lecturing her on being a proper lady and what not, but she had taken to wearing large colorful spenders without a shirt, matching color knee-length shorts and black combat boots, with her pistol in its holder. She had never seen him so angry when he saw what she was wearing, so decided to wear the dresses he bought her and then remove it when he came. She did feel touched though he had taken her in as his granddaughter and had treated her the same way as he did Luffy though at times much gentler. When he had arrived, he had sent them to live in the mountains with bandits. This was when they had met Ace, who didn't like them at first but warmed up to them later, and then Sabo. The four of them had created a bond a bond of siblings and it was a place Reina had finally felt like she had belonged. She did of course tell them about her past and understandably they were angry. They all trained and hunted each one of them wanting to be pirates. She and Luffy introduced them to Rhea, who could she learned could shrink her size and grow to her original size at will due to her magic. They were terrified at first, since according to Ben Rhea hadn't stopped growing yet, but she explained to them that she was harmless and they left her alone. Reina hadn't forgotten about her magic either. She had all the basic spells in her book down pat, even though they weren't combat spells, they were still helpful. She loved her book on runes and although it was simply basic ones too, they still greatly helped her in many things. Two years after that, when she and Luffy were nine and Ace and Sabo were twelve, was the saddest year of their lives. Not only was Sabo taken away from them, but he had died when he was trying to escape. Reina had ranted about the injustice and tried to get her grandpa to arrest the man, 
but the man was a celestial dragon and that was when the three learned the ugly truth about the marines. Garp didn't like the disappointed looks they kept shooting them, he himself being disgusted in the system. He wasn't as harsh to them whenever they declared to be pirates simply telling them he wanted them to be stronger. A year later, Mother Magic had gifted her with a weapon. It was both a scythe and a sniper and she absolutely loved it, she practiced with it all the time and tried to get the transformation time to lessen whenever she was in a fight. She placed a sticking charm on it and stuck it on her belt opposite to her pistol. When Ace turned 17, he had set off on his own pirate adventure. He had set Luffy aside and said something to him, but whatever it was it had Luffy glaring at a lot of people at random times for the first couple weeks, until he simply stopped he probably forgot what it was. Ace always glared at people whenever they went into town, but she never knew why which made him especially scared that someone would take advantage of his innocent little sister, which made sense to her. Due to the fact she stayed with Luffy all the time, his cluelessness had rubbed off on her, making him just as clueless as him when it came to the opposite, or even the same. Right now Reina was considered the prettiest young girl in the village. Her training had given her curves in all the right places and although she didn't wear a shirt, her spenders were large enough to cover a lot of her chest and she did wear a bra. Her skin was a beautiful pale color, her eyes a vibrant green that held a gleam of mischief at her hair was either in a braid or simply in a ponytail. Luffy himself had grew up from the little boy to a still clueless young man, but his face had a look of mischief and trouble in his arms, although slender than most training men held some muscle. He still wore his straw hat, a red vest as it was his favorite color, blue shorts and sandals. He took his friendship with Reina serious and they would defend the other whenever the village children tried to pick on them. With that, Reina had fallen asleep, waiting for their adventure the next day. Reina double checked if everything was in her back, she was glad she still had her bottomless bag with her, for Haven knows they need it. She had figured out long ago that whatever food was placed inside would be kept in some sort of stasis and would never go bad. That was why she had began gathering food and placing it inside the bag for the last couple of months knowing Luffy's appetite. Besides food, there was money she stole a lot from the nobles their part of the gold, extra clothes, a polish for her sniper side and anything else she could think of. She had managed to work a rune over pistol that allowed her to never run out of bullets a conjuration rune and it helped bring cost down a lot. She had Rhea wrapped around her neck and waited for Luffy. Once he gave the signal, they ran to the docks, not stopping once, having had their boat ready the night before. Mayor they're escaping, someone called out. Luffy quickly jumped into the boat and Reina followed behind and pushed it into the sea as they sailed away. She then let Rhea out into the water and instructed her to swim ahead, with Jet having already gone ahead. She didn't want to be slowed down just in case or for the Major to come quickly. You two are going to be disgraces to this village. You better become king of the pirates Luffy, yelled the mayor. Don't worry old man. Just you wait, I'll be the king of the pirates exclaimed Luffy, as they both waved the villagers goodbye. The mayor sighed once they were out of sight, Garp is going to kill. A couple hours later, they had no idea where they were. Reina had given Luffy some food but deigned him any more. If you keep eating how do you expect me to give you food later on when you ask? Reina berated him, but still gave him food, last one until we reach the next island, alright? She was given a sad pout, but an agreement was made. Then they heard rushing water and both pirates looked out runned and their jaws hung low. Holy shit! They exclaimed as they saw the largest whirlpool them. Reina had no time to think as next thing she knew was darkness. Walking up, she looked around and it seemed like she as on a ship. She didn't know where Luffy was, but knew he would be fine. It wasn't like they were going to be separated forever. She looked around and decided to see if there were any treasures on board. She needed them to pay from Luffy's bills. The boy could eat and was never full. She had managed to get a lot of jewels, money, perfumes, some clothes and she dumped them in her bag. She absolutely loved the bag as it never got heavy or full, whatever ship they were on shore did have a lot of valuable things. She idly wondered if it were a pirate ship but shrugged and went back to searching. As she searched, she heard whispered, SHHS, and a laughter she knew all too well. Opening the door, she knew it was Luffy who was trying to eat the food in the pantry and a pink-haired boy trying to stop him. Poor boy, didn't he know it was fruitless to try to stop the rubber boy when it came to food? Havens knows how much she had tried until she gave up. Hey, Luffy. Good to see you and who's your friend? 
She gestured to the boy, who turned red, probably due to her lack of shirt. Ray, this is Kobe. Kobe this is Ray, my first mate, he said, finally getting to eat the food while the boy was stammering. The name's Potter D. Reyna and this is my Captain Monkey D. Luffy. Kobe right? What are you doing here? She asked. Kobe's story made her want to laugh and bang her head at his cowardliness at the same time. Who the hell accidentally gets on a pirate ship and then is too chicken to get off? And he wanted to be a marine? She shook her head in disbelief and flicked the boy's forehead. Kobe, don't be a coward next time and simply do what you believe in. What were you going to do if a marine ship were to capture the crew you're with? They won't listen to your story and simply haul you into jail. You're an accomplice for all they care. Next time, let your fate be rested in your own hands and not others. You can't expect others to do what you're supposed to do. Reyna might have not known it, but Kobe had taken her words to heart and had lived by them throughout his marine days. Just as she finished her rant, the ceiling had began to crack and she pushed herself and Kobe out of the way. When the dust settled, Reyna and Luffy couldn't believe their eyes. In front of them was the most ugliest and fattiest woman they had ever seen. She was even worse than Petunia and that was saying something as she always believed that Petunia was the ugliest woman she had seen. Who's the ugly old hag? Luffy asked, disinterest. Kobe gasped in horror and Reyna rubbed her forehead. Luffy would be the death of her one day. Reyna side stepped the iron club and sprang to the top of the deck, Luffy carrying Kobe right behind her. They were instantly surrounded by what seemed like the pirates of the ship. The ugly woman seemed to be their captain. Who is the most beautiful woman in the sea? She called out and all the pirate men from her crew answered. You are Princess Alvida. Reyna gaped and Luffy tilted his head to the side. Dayton is much prey than she is. He said and Reyna couldn't help but nod her head in agreement. Honestly, there was no comparison. Alvida, however was beyond pissed, if the veins on her face were anything to go by. Kill them! She cried out. Reyna took out her snither as she liked to call her sniper scythe hybrid and transformed it into a scythe. Chaos shockwave. She flung it out and a dozen or so men had fallen. Luffy himself was battling them as many decided to simply chase him. Gum gum rocket he cried as he stretched and hit all of them with his attack. Reyna quickly grabbed Kobe away from Alvita's club and she smiled smugly at the pink haired boy. Who's the most beautiful woman in all the seas? She asked him. Kobe trembled a bit, but with Reyna's encouraged nod, he stood up straighter as he remembered her words from earlier. He was going to do this his way and not live in fear all his life. That was if he ever wanted to become a marine. That would be Potter D. Reyna because you're the ugliest and fattiest old hag that ever existed, he yelled. Alvida was red in anger and rage and the other barely conscious pirates were pale white. Reyna on the other hand twirled the blushing boy around cooing at his adorableness. Ah, thank you, she cooed. Alvida threw her club at them, but before Reyna could defend them, Luffy had kicked it away and then punched the woman in the stomach with a gum gum pistol. Just then, an explosion had rocked the ship. Reyna looked out and saw that it were marines attacking the ship. Luffy, it's the marines. We need to get going now, she said as she threw Kobe over her shoulder, her bag safe and secure and jumped into one of the boats there. Luffy jumped in after them and after seeing that they were all safe, she whistled. A couple moments later, Rhea had appeared and Jet was flying over them. She was glad they were here. Rhea, could you take Yusa away? The Marines will catch up soon. She hissed at the fairly large Sea King and ignored Kobe's scared cry. Rhea. Luffy waved at the large Sea King, who waved her tailed happily. Of course. I shall take you to the nearest island. And she had began gilding the boat they were on to the next island. Why you can speak to Sea Kings? Kobe stammered out. Reyna smiled causing him the blush again and looked down. Yup. I found Rhea here when we were young and she's been with us since, she explained. Oh, so you two have known each other for a long time? She pointed to her and Luffy as she gave the rubber boy some food. Ray is my first friend. We've been together since we were six, Luffy said enthusiastically. Reyna gave him a soft smile as she removed a piece of food from the edge of his mouth. Eat slowly, there's no need to rush. She looked at him fondly, she honestly couldn't imagine her life with the rubber-haired boy. She stretched out and double-checked everything before lying down. Wake me up when we get to the next island, 
she told the boy before promptly falling asleep, she needed this nap. Wow Kobe, you're pretty good with the sales. Reina couldn't help but comment. Kobe scratched the back of his head. It's something every sailor should know, he shrugged. That's why we have Rhea, both she and Luffy said and then grinned. Honestly she had tried to learn navigating, but it made no sense whatsoever. She had decided to gather intelligence instead. Luffy on the other hand, simply said he'd get himself a navigator and that was the end of that. That was why they relied on Rhea. Soon we'll be at the marine base. Are you excited? Luffy asked the young boy. I hope I'm allowed to join. He sagged a bit. Don't worry, they'll love you. I just can't wait to see a real marine base. It'll be so exciting. Reina exclaimed, with Luffy cheering on the side. You guys shouldn't get so worked up. They say Roranoa Zoro is being held there. He's a pirate hunter and it's said that he cuts people from the inside. He's a demon, Kobe warned. Reina and Luffy grinned though. A demon huh? Reina smirked, a look of mischief in her eyes, only to be mirrored by Luffy's even wider grin. He'd make a great crewmate. I wonder how long we'll get there, he laughed. Kobe just gaped at the two. Did you not hear a single word I just said? He'll kill you, he waved his arms around in fright. The other two just smiled and looked at the sea. They'd seen and done crazier things before. Their little family was filled with insane people. Their gramps a marine vice admiral, their brother a pirate and son of the late pirate king and then there was Sabo, who was a runaway noble who defied a celestial dragon even though he had died. A part of Reina, however, always believed that he had survived and that they would met one day. Don't worry would you. We'll simply see what kind of person he is first then we'll see from there, she waved off his concerns. A couple hours later, they had finally reached the city. It was a beautiful and calm looking island, a place that had a sense of peace, but something felt off. Reina didn't know what it was, but kept her guard up. They had reached a large iron gate. It had the marine signs on it and it had a simple two building and a large yard with a fence surrounding it. There seemed to be someone tied to a post in the middle. Let's get a closer look at Zoro Ray. Luffy said as Kobe tried to drag him away from the fence, but was instead dragged along. Reina sighed and simply followed. She had a feeling that this Zoro wasn't a horrible person and he would be joining their crew. Once they reached the fence where he was close to, they had seen a small little girl or about eight or so looking around and then climbing a ladder. She dropped down and ran to where the tied up man Zoro was and gave him what looked like a rice ball. Zoro on the other hand seemed to be denying it, until they were accosted by others. You know Zoro, people don't like bullies. An arrogant blonde walked up to the two with marines behind him. Reina instantly didn't like the guy as he looked spoiled and that everything was handed to him on a silver plate. Hum, rice balls huh? He went and grabbed on, ignoring the crying little girl, which made her blood boil, yuck, why is this filled with sugar? Rice balls are made with salt you idiot he spat it out and then threw the other rice balls from her hands and stomped on it, making the girl cry harder. Don't you know that anyone helps a criminal will be killed? Captain Morgan signed it, he's my father by the way. He said arrogantly, you there, throw her over the wall, he pointed to a marine. The man looked nervous. Um, sir, she's just a little girl. And Reina really wanted to pound the idiot when he actually threw the girl just because he was afraid of the little tattletale. Luckily though, Luffy caught the little girl so there was no damage done. Thank you mister, the girl said, once he put her down. Are you alright? Reina asked the young girl, who nodded. Yes miss. My name is Rika. She said, It's nice to meet you, Rika. My name is Reina. These here are Luffy and Kobe. Where do you stay? She asked the little girl now named Rika, and they began making their way to the restaurant where her mother worked. After getting some food to eat, it was explained to them how Helmeppo had came to their restaurant with his pet wolf while Zoro and the others were eating. He let his wolf go and it began eating the food of everyone there, and the blonde pounce simply stood back and laughed at all the chaos and everyone's fear. Rika had explained that she tried to shoo it away with her broom, but it had began attacking her instead. Zoro had came in and rescued her by hitting the wolf, killing it. Helmeppo wanted to punish her, but Zoro had taken her punishment and it was decided that if he could survive tied up to the post for one month without food or water, then he'd be free and there would be no punishment. Reina could already tell that Luffy had made up his mind and decided to make the swordsman join his crew and Reina couldn't fault him. 
This Zoro wasn't a demon, but a very honorable guy, but she had a feeling that Helmeppo wasn't and that he was going to cut off the deal, she had to plan. She left and discreetly made her way back to the marine base. Searching it, she found a couple maps and money and stashed them away into her bag. She ran into a room, which she saw three swords. Remembering that Zoro was a swordsman, she wondered which one was his before she simply grabbed all three. She also grabbed a camera for taking pictures to add to her journal where she wrote about their adventure. Once she made it out, she was greeted to the sight of a large man with an axe threatening Zoro and Luffy seemed to have just deflected some bullets. She brought out her scythe and began shooting them from behind as Luffy took care of the marines, she untied Zoro and handed him the his swords. I didn't know which ones were yours so here, nice to officially met you new crewmate, she didn't give him time to answer as she went and punched Helmeppo in the gut, who was holding Kobe at gunpoint. The pink-haired boy hugged her as he sobbed, probably scared shitless. She patted his head. He had gone through so much of her and Luffy's craziness she knew he deserved a breakdown. She sighed in relief as Luffy had finally defeated Axe Hand Morgan and surprisingly all the marines cheered. Apparently the man was a tyrant that nobody liked but were too afraid of him regardless. Zoro had actually agreed to join their crew sometime during the fight, which made her happy, she didn't know what Luffy said to the guy, but having a pirate hunter become a pirate was no easy task. But then again, it was Luffy. Miracles were bound to happen. As they were enjoying their meal, Rika and her mother had given it to them for free and the other villagers thanked them as well. They were figuring out a way for Kobe to join the marines, without them thinking that he knew them. Zoro she learned was obsessed with booze, so made sure to buy lots before they headed out for the next island. Soon enough, the restaurant was surrounded by marines, one of them, who was the acting commander, had stood in front of them. It has come to our attention that you three are pirates and as marines, we are to arrest you, he said and everyone in the bar protested, however as thanks for defeating the tyrant Axe Hand Morgan, we shall let you leave in peace. Reina sagged in her seat a bit, glad that they were going to be able to leave peacefully, she saw from the corner of her eye Luffy whispering harshly to Kobe and much to her surprise had Punch Luffy calling him scum for being a pirate. From there on, the marines asked Kobe to join them but they all knew it was for show. That was a nice thing you did for the kid captain, Zoro said as they readied Thier boat for departure. He's right Luffy, you did good, Reina added as Luffy laughed happiness. It's his dream to become a marine, he shouldn't have to give it up just because of us, he said and they nodded in agreement. Luffy, Reina, Zoro. Thank you so much for helping me, but next time we met I'll have to arrest you, Kobe waved at them, happy that he could finally begin his dream something hadn't though possible before. Reina had nearly forgotten she had wanted to give Kobe something and ran up to him. Here, if you want to get serious with your training, ask the higher ups to patch you in with Garp. If they ask why, tell them you have a message from Reina. He should understand. She explained as she thrust a paper into his hands before she rejoined the others. Thanks you. He called out and she waved. Men, salute, and all the marines saluted at the pirates. For saluting to pirates we shall not eat food for the next three days. Yes sir. But the marines were happy that pirate or no, they had saved them from a tyrant. They might be marines, but that didn't mean they were all good. Perhaps the same could be seen by some pirates. I never though I'd see the day where marines salute to pirates. Zoro commented before they busted into laughter. They couldn't wait to see what their next adventure would take them next, but wherever it was, it would be fun. Say Zoro, I never did ask what your dream was. Reina thought of once they were out of the island's sight. To be the world's greatest swordsman. To do that, I have to beat the current strongest Dracula Mahawk. He said determinedly and she nodded, wondering where she heard that name before. Ah, you mean Shank's friend? Luffy exclaimed and she scowled at the mention of the pervert. You guys know him? Zoro raised an eyebrow, a part of him not even surprised that they had met someone high profile it just seems like them. Yeah, Shanks and his crew we met about 10 years ago and Mahawk had came to them then. He's a pervert that's what he is. She scowled and then looked Zoro in the eyes with a serious expression, Zoro, when you take the title from him you had better not be a pervert, understood? The green haired man blinked and then nodded, to which her expression did a 180 and smiled brightly. Note to self, he thought dryly, never get on her bad side. Food. I'm hungry. Luffy moaned. 
Raina sighed. I suppose our meal was interrupted, she said and dug into her bag as she took some food out and gave some to both boy along with a bottle of booze for Zoro. I noticed you liked it and bought some. Enjoy. Zoro felt touched as she had already began thinking of his needs and decided that he could have been recruited for worse pirate crews. This one was one he planned on sticking with. Rhea, Jet. Food's ready. She called out. Zoro wondered who she was talking to until a large creature came from the sea. He went to his swords as it was a freaking sea king and then an abnormally large hawk swooped in and sat on top of the sea king's head. Reyna giggled and Luffy laughed at Zoro's expression. It seemed everyone was surprised at their companions. Zoro, let me introduce you to Rhea the Sea King and Jet the Hawk. You guys, this is Zoro, our new crew member. She introduced them. Zoro settled down and took a gulp of his drink. A Sea King, really? he asked. Ray can speak to her. Go, on say something. Luffy urged her and she rolled her eyes but compiled. Is the food delicious Rhea? she hissed and Zoro nearly dropped his drink. Yes, it's excellent as always my dear. Rhea answered. Reina then made up her mind. There are a lot of things about us. Well me in particular you should know since you're our crewmate. She looked at Luffy who nodded as he saw the seriousness of the situation, which surprised Zoro. So for the next couple of hours she explained her past, how she wasn't of this world, her parents, her relatives, her deal with mother magic, her devil fruit, living with Luffy finding Rhea and keeping her ability to speak to sea kings a secret as well as the fact that Luffy could understand them to a degree. This was something she and Ace had found out and vowed to keep the rubber boy safe. Zoro for his part was shocked at the amount of information he was told and angry on Reina's behalf. Luffy could always tell if a person was good or not and he had deemed Zoro the trustworthy type, it's why she told him everything so soon. Soon enough, Luffy got bored and spotted a bird. Reina had said he couldn't eat any more food and thus looked for other sources. I bet you that bird would taste nice. His mouth watered as he rocketed his arms towards the bird. No Luffy wait, but it was too late and the bird fell off with Luffy. You idiot! Both she and Zoro yelled. They were going to go after him, but spotted three men abandoned in the water, so decided to help them. Besides, Luffy would be alright. Are you three alright? She asked them after fishing them out of the water. Blood squirt from their noses as they had this perverted look on their faces. Zoro sighed. Yes what Reina was wearing was ridiculous, but couldn't people have more self-control in their lives? It was disgraceful really. We're a part of the The Great Buggy's crew, they said pompously when they were dried. Well now be claiming this ship and the beautiful lady is our own, another said, giggling perversely, only to be beaten up and then tied by the two. You were going to do what? Reina snarled darkly at them, making them beg for mercy. We're sorry. We were tricked into giving our boat to this red-haired girl and all of our treasure was on it. So we need to get another boat and treasure so our captain won't be angry, they explained pathetically. What should we do? She asked Zoro. We'll be heading to the next island anywhere. We drop them off there and get our idiotic captain. Then get to the next island. Unless you need to stock up? He questioned and she nodded. No, not really. I will just in case though, she said and it was set. Once they reached Orange Island, they had gotten enough information from their prisoners about their captain. Apparently he was a devil fruit user, having at the chop chop fruit and was feared for his buggy balls. Reina was simply excited that she could copy another devil fruit that wasn't Luffy's. They heard an explosion, and saw many of the island houses being destroyed, which disgusted the two pirates. Why exactly was he destroying the homes of the innocent? It was people like him that gave pirates a bad name. It's Captain Buggy's buggy balls, one of the prisoners said. Reina and Zoro ran to where the explosions were coming from and saw a man in what seemed to be a clown outfit on a ship, a cannon besides him. On the side, they saw Luffy in a cage, with a red-haired woman who fit he description of what the prisoners told them of who stole their stuff was trying to put out the flame that would fire at the rubber boy. The man seemed to have seen them as he grinned. Well, well, well. If it isn't Roranoa Zoro and. Put some clothes on you damn Scarla woman. What's wrong with women nowadays? He screamed at rage, as he waved his finger at Reina, who looked like she could care less, not that you aren't a sight for sore eyes of course. He added giggling. Unknown to him though, Reina had copied his power and internally jumping in joy. Now she didn't have to be worried of knives and bullets. 
I'll distract him while you try to get Luffy out of there. She whispered to her crewmate, who nodded it and left. Hey big nose. Let my brother out of there right now, she yelled at the top of her lungs. Silence. All of the crew members knew how delicate and sensitive their captain was about his nose and this girl just went and insulted him at the top of her lungs. Buggy had veins popping up all of her face, how dare she? What did you say? I'll make you regret that you scarlet woman, he yelled as he cut off two parts of his arms that had knives in her apart. Much to their surprise, there wasn't any blood and all the body pieces went back together. H how do you have my powers? Buggy whispered in fright. I ate the copy copy fruit that allows me to copy the powers of any devil I encounter. She explained smugly and then pointed to his side. You might want to look to your left. The last thing they had seen was one of their own buggy balls used against them, knocking them unconscious. You all right Luffy? Reina looked over the young rubber boy, who laughed. Yeah, Nami here saved. He said and she hugged him before. She nodded to Zoro in thanks before she turned her attention to the red-haired girl named Nami. Saved you huh? She narrowed her eyes at he sweating girl. Would you like to explain to me how you were in EH situation in the first place? She scowled. The girl laughed nervously and avoided looking at her and she knew she had something to do with it. It's alright Ray. she's our new navigator. Luffy said happily. She looked at Zoro, who shrugged and both boys went back to their boat. Reina sighed. She knew she could be intimating at times, but Luffy was much too naive at times and people took advantage of that. He was too sweet and kind for such horrible things to open to him so she decided to shield him. Welcome to the crew Miss Navigator. She waved her over and proceeded to follow the boys. Nami sighed. She had already told the raven-haired boy that she didn't want to join his crew, but the other two just went along with it. Not to mention that the girl was scary when she wanted to be. She decided to follow them for now. Besides, it would be nice to travel with another girl again. The crew of four had been out to sea for a while. Nami was checking her gold, while Zoro slept. They got into a scuffle when Luffy revealed that he had left the gold with the village. Reina couldn't fault him, for he always thought of others before himself. Besides, she had enough of her personal treasures to ensure their survival, she did give Nami some of the gold as compensation. There was a question Luffy had for his sister he wanted to ask since they had left. Hey Ray, what did you give Kobe before we left? He asked, they both sat at the edge of the boat. They weren't afraid of falling, because Rhea was nearby. Oh I gave him a letter that would get Grandpa to teach him, he was serious of becoming a marine wasn't he? She wrapped an arm around him and he shuffled closer. That's evil, he grinned, better him than us right? And they laughed. Say Luffy. Have you ever though what our life could have been if we actually became marines? She laughed at his shudder. Ray, don't even joke about that. That's a horrible thought. He shook. Really now, who would want to become a marine? But if we're thinking it, then I suppose I'd want to become fleet admiral, you. A marine's wife is something I definitely will never become. They shared a laugh, but I wouldn't mind being a captain. She answered. Check out these pictures. I'm going to add them to our logbook. She showed him the various pictures she took. This past week was crazy, it was hard to believe they had just began their adventure, but they were glad that they had a minute to themselves. The other was always there when they were at their lowest and not feeling well. A rock, a ground. That's what they were to one another. They were siblings in everything but blood, but since when did something as flimsy as blood ever stop them? They joked and laughed about the week and their experiences from their own home village, the rest of the world forgotten. They're really close huh? Nami whispered to Zoro as they both watched the two raven heads joke and laugh. They've known one another since they were children. Luffy doesn't know anything about his family except a grandfather and Reina's are better off dead. From what I understand they only had each other. Zoro explained as he went back to sleep, leaving the red-haired girl to ponder on his words. A couple hours had passed when Nami had finally told them they had reached their destination. Syrup Village something she had learned from the maps Reina had stolen from Axe Hand Morgan's base back at Shells Island. When they reached shore, they pulled the boats on taut he docks and Rhea had decided to go with Reina so shrunk down and curled herself on her neck. Just as they were going to make it on their way, mini flags began popping up everywhere. This island is under the protection of Captain Usopp. Turn back and leave pirates. They turned and were confronted by a tanned skinned teen. 
wearing overalls, brown boots, a bandana and a very long nose. Behind him was a large flag with an intimidating skull. Reina and Luffy recognized him immediately as Yasop's son. Grinning at one another, Reina knew he'd join their crew at the end of the day. That's a lie. Nami waved him off, there are probably only three people there. Three children came out rushing from the bush screaming. Ah! She saw right through us, and left a sweating Usopp behind. The four just sweat dropped at their blunt abandonment, they definitely didn't know a thing about subtlety that was for sure. You're Yasop's son, Usopp aren't you? You spoke highly about you when we met. Reina had began. My name is Reina, these are Luffy the captain. Zoro our swordsman and Nami our navigator. Nice to meet you, she introduced them. You know my dad? Usopp had all but abandoned his post and had brought them to a restaurant in the village while they told him what they knew about his dad. He was quite impressed that he was a part of the crew of red haired shanks. Say, do you know where we can get a ship? Nami asked. This is a pretty small village, there's nowhere you can find a ship here, Usopp told them. What about that large mansion we saw before? Zoro asked, making the long nosed teen nervous. He, he, I just remembered I had to do some errands. Bye, and then sped out of the restaurant. Reina, Nami and Zoro just deadpanned at the place he ran off. That was obviously a lie, they thought, but never stopped him. As they ate their food or more like Reina crying at the amount it would cost her and Zoro awkwardly trying to cheer her up did the three children from before come bursting into the restaurant. Nami and Zoro taunted them, making the children believe they had eaten Usopp, which resulted with them calling Nami and Reina, old hags, and getting beaten by both girls. They split up later on, with Reina packing up their supplies for the other three. A first aid kit with lots of banatages was a necessity and some sword polish for Hersf and Zoro. She already had intel and maps from the marine base they went to back on Shell's village, so they were all set. She wondered if she could find a place they could get a ship. A ship? One of the men she asked replied, the only place I can think of is Logue Town, but that's if you want to head towards the Grand Line. They have lots of ships there so you should find what you're looking for. Thank you. She thanked him and went on her way. She knew Logue Town. It was the place where the Pirate King was born and died something that Luffy had repeated over and over as a place he wanted to see. She couldn't blame him, but Ace didn't quite like him saying it, so she had him hush up. She really didn't know why Ace hated his father. I mean, he probably heard the man was scum from his enemies. She wasn't someone to judge, considering her own family problems, so let it be. Mother Magic had told her that she could send letters to anyone she wanted to and she was debating on whether she should send one to her grandpa Al. Even now, he was her most favorite person, especially from the information Maggie Mother Magic had told her. He always found time for her, even visiting the Potter Manor just to speak to her. It made her twin and parents angry, she could tell, but she never cared. She felt special those few minutes they were together, like she was a person that mattered. She felt bad for not contacting him but could never really know what to say. She decided that once she had her first bounty she would send it to him and a letter explaining why she was a pirate. Her crew weren't like the ones that killed innocents. She and Luffy would never accept such things. And she was sure the others wouldn't either. It was like their code of honor or something. She was brought out of her musings when she noticed a strange man walking backwards and almost walked into her. Hey, watch where you're going, he yelled at him. The man wore these ridiculous heart-shaped sunglasses, green pants, a white shirt AD and a marine looking coat. She could see blood trickling down his nose and she rolled her eyes. Men, could they be more like her brothers, or even Zoro? My apologizes. I am Django, a hypnotist. Reina tensed. She knew that name. He was a part of the crew with Captain Kuro. Outwardly though, she showed no response. Well, it's nice to meet you. Next time, don't run into people. She nodded to him and then walked away. She needed to warn the others. Needles to say, they were pretty shocked, especially when one of the children had described the butler at the mansion had fit the description of Captain Kuro that had been executed two years ago. They were in the middle of making a plan, when Usopp came running to them, looking shocked, pale, and frantic. Usopp, where's Luffy? Nami asked, but he ran past them all the way to the cliff and peered down. They followed suit and noticed that Luffy was lying face flat on the ground, not moving. I is he dead? Nami stammered and even Zoro looked shocked. 
Don't be ridiculous. He's just asleep. Reina pointed out and sure enough, he was. Luffy, wake up. This is not the time to sleep. She shook him awake. His eyes opening, he gave her a tight hug. Reina, the butler. He's going to kill Kaya and then steal all of her money, he explained. We had a feeling he was going to do something. That's why we're making a plan, she said and then explained their plan to him. They would be at an advantage as they believed Luffy to be dead. The next morning, they all stationed themselves at the North Shore. They arrived just as the pirates did and with the combined efforts of Reina's scythe, Zoro's swords and Luffy's hands, they were able to send them all flying back. The pirates were losing their nerve. They thought they were simply going to attack an peaceful town, not three people who were much stronger than them. Listen up men. Our enemies are much stronger than us. When I say Django, you'll be stronger than them. One, two and Django. Reina and Zoro looked away, but Luffy wasn't so fortunate and began attacking them. No Luffy, they're the enemy, Reina shouted pointing at the enemy pirates. Luffy's simple hypnotized mind seemed to register her words and he began attacking his enemies with a gum gum gatlin, much to both Zoro and Reina's relief. Django was sweating in fear. If Captain Kuro were to see this, he'd kill them all. We still have our trump card, Shambuchi, go, he cried out. Reina transformed her weapon into a scythe and took on one brother and Zoro took on the other. They were pretty fast, but she managed to beat her opponent with a well-times bullet. She sagged in relief, believing that they were finished, which cost her greatly. The last thing she remembered was Captain Kuro had arrived and had stabbed her in the stomach, making her black out. She came to when a worried Luffy was hovering over her and she felt herself patched up from her stomach wound. Ray! You're awake! He exclaimed giving her a hug and at the same time trying to hurt her. I'm fine Lou. Where's Kuro and the others? She asked, still not letting go. She could tell he was quite worried about her. She vowed to train harder so he wouldn't next time. I beat Kuro up and the rest of his crew were all unconscious. Zoro and the others are alright too. We're staying at Kaya's mansion and she patched you up. He explained and then in a softer tone smiled, I'm glad you're alright Ray. She brought him into another hug, reassuring him that she was alright. She healed her wound at a much faster pace with the basic healing spell she learned from her book and proceeded to heal the others. It was the first time they were injured, but they came through. One week later had the four crew members at the shore, a surprise waiting for them. I present to you, the Going Mary. A thank you gift for saving our lives. Kaya's sheep-like butler had presented to them. It was a beautiful ship that was for sure and they couldn't wait to get on. Wait for me. They heard a yell and soon enough, they saw Usopp tumbling down the hill. I've decided to join your crew and become a great warrior of the sea like my father he declared. Reina giggled. Come on then. Let's get going to our new adventure. Luffy cheered and she and Zoro shared a smile. This was going to be fun alright. Thanks for watching.